Hello and welcome back to another video. I'm going to try and keep this video pretty short. I'm just going to show a simple stereo widening trick that can be used to add a lot more clarity and sort of focus to an element in your mix. In this case, I'm demonstrating it on our new song that's called Right Here. There is a Rhodes piano patch, which is in mono, and there's also a mono vocal during the verse. And the two elements sort of step on top of each other a little bit. And even though I've tried to separate them with EQ and compression, I didn't really feel that I was getting far enough. So I'm going to show you the section just here and we're listening for that Rhodes piano and the vocal sort of just getting in the way of each other sometimes. I'm going to quickly turn off the processing on the roads and the vocal and you'll see that I've tried to separate them out. Falling, don't know where we're going, but it's alright. So I've tried my best to sort of brighten up the vocal, thin out the roads a little bit, but they're still completely mono and on top of each other. So what I'm going to do is leave the vocal on its own right now, and I'm going to go on to the roads. I've already got some compression and EQ going on here, but what's new is the ozone imager and a mid-side EQ. I think there's a free, more simple version of this imager available, but any stereo widening plugin will work. As with all stereo widening, we have to be really careful that we don't completely mess up the phase and that it's still mono compatible. So I'm gonna be checking for all of that as well. So I'm gonna sort of initialize a preset. There's one called Modern Width in here that's quite a nice starting point I find for synths. And the first thing to do is to press this Stereoize button because if you don't press that, this plugin will do absolutely nothing. The number of tutorials I've seen for this plugin where people leave this on off. They start pushing the bands up saying that they can hear stereo widening. You need to turn the stereo button on for this plugin to work. The bands here break it into frequencies so that you can stereo spread each frequency differently. You could have the high frequencies very stereo, low frequencies mono, which is really handy. The first thing I'm going to do is go to the lower band and pulling it down will keep it in mono. Pushing it up is going to make it more and more stereo. I'm going to take that down gently. I'm just going to push the other bands up just a little bit and then I'm going to start listening and making changes. On this diagram here, the left and right information is displayed and if I bypass the plugin, you'll see that the patch is completely mono up the center and it gets wider as I start changing these parameters. If I go outside of this sort of 45 degree lines, if I start ending up here and if this drops down a lot, that means that my phase is getting really messed up. So I want to try and avoid messing up that phase as much as possible. There will be an element of phase issues when you're using a stereo widening plugin, but I'm just trying to minimize it. I'm also going to solo it just so that you can hear exactly what this plugin is doing. But when I mix, I wouldn't solo this. I would be doing it all in context. Let's take a listen. First bypassed. So already that's doing quite a lot to the stereo image of the sound. Now, depending on whether you're listening in headphones or studio monitors, this is going to sound quite different. I would recommend checking the stereo in studio monitors because in headphones, you're going to get a little bit of a false image of what's going on. Usually in these stereo widening tools, there's lots of different display formats that help you check for things like phase cancellation and the stereo spectrum. So don't be afraid to try all the different view modes and all the different spectrum and phase modes until you find something that really helps you understand what's going on. But remember, always let your ears guide what you're doing, not the visual displays. Usually, if you just uh, listen out for it, you'll hear the phase kind of being off. You'll hear it sounding washy or strange or things sort of cancelling out. So you want to just try and keep it uh, natural sounding and just enhance the width. The next step in the stereo widening was to use a mid-side EQ. So what I've got is TR5 equal, but you can do this in any EQ that has a mid-side capability. I've got it in mid-side mode, and in the mids, I'm just going to pull down a little bit of this sort of low mid region, so like, you know, 130 hertz or so. This is so that the sort of thickness of the vocal in the center is uninterrupted, and I'm kind of getting rid of some of the, the bulkiness of the Rhodes patch at that point. Then on the sides, I'm going to leave the mid 
alone. And I'm going to boost the high end ever so slightly. And this is hopefully going to make the edges of the stereo spectrum just feel even brighter. So instead of pushing the high end too far inside the stereo widening plugin, I'm just going to try and push it a little bit more with an EQ. Now what I'm going to do is export two versions of this section, one with the Rhodes in mono, one with the Rhodes in stereo, and I'm just going to do an AB comparison. So I've just gone and done that. In the top in red, we have the mono. The bottom in blue, we have the stereo. And let's just take a listen to it. To me, the top one sounds a little bit more realistic. You know, you've got the mono roads in the middle. It sounds a little bit more old school. But the one on the bottom definitely sounds a lot more modern. It's got that sort of completely different stereo width or, or soundscape to it. And especially if you listen in headphones, the track really just opens up and widens up. Now, I'm not going to say one's better than the other. But in the one on the bottom, the vocal just sounds like it has its own space an awful lot more. Now, whenever you do stereo widening, you need to check for mono uh, compatibility. And while the plugins have good tools to help you with this, sometimes the best thing to do is to just throw the master into mono and then just listen to them and see whether one sounds completely broken. So the one on the bottom definitely sounded a lot thinner, but then I did thin it out with the EQ anyway, so I don't think there's any huge problems, but if you were going to use this technique on many elements of your mix, if you had more keys patches, more pads, uh, synth basses, if you were trying to stereo widen everything, it's likely that things would start sounding really mushy, sort of phasey and, and strange. So you want to keep the stereo widening to a minimum, really use it where you think it's going to help. Uh, the tracks shine the most, I suppose. Often with things like keys, especially this Rhodes stage piano, I, I forget that stereo widening is even an option. I sent away uh, the demo, which pretty much sounded like the top, to uh, a mentor that I trust very much. And the first thing he said was, do you want to take a look at the mid-side EQ that you've got on the Rhodes patch? Because I think it could be tweaked a bit. And I was thinking, well, actually, I haven't even done a mid-side EQ on it. I haven't stereo separated it at all. So I gave it a go with the stereo separation and the mid-side EQ. And it really transformed the song into something that sounds um, completely different. In my opinion, it sounds better with the stereo separation, but that's just a that's just a taste thing. But it's good to know that you have both options available to you. So I hope this video has been helpful in some way. If anyone would like a sort of a more in-depth uh, look at stereo separation or mid-side EQ, I can make a tutorial just specific to all the ins and outs of this sort of stereo separation using the sort of Ozone plugin or using a mid-side EQ and try to talk about how it works, why it works and such. But for now, I hope that's been helpful and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.